Glory to God. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. Hallelujah. I want to say welcome to the committed and faithful Bible study. Amen. This is our first Bible study for the new year. Hallelujah for 2021. Hallelujah. And I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. Hallelujah to be able to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. I'm Prophetess Daisy. And uh, I, I'm excited about what the Lord is going to reveal in us, through us, and to us. Amen. As a result of our time together. I'm excited. Hallelujah, about what God is getting ready to reveal to us in this new year. Amen? Now, before we get started, I do want to take this opportunity to invite you to join us every Wednesday right here, 730 Eastern, on our Facebook page, Facebook Live. Um, it will be an honor and a privilege to be able to share this time with you that the Lord has set aside for us um, to, to share his word. Now I do want to make mention real quick that at any time you're looking for words of encouragement, looking for a message, um, you can always go to my YouTube channel. While you're there, I want to invite you to subscribe and turn on the notification so anytime I post a video, you'll be notified. Amen. I want nothing more for you this year than for you to be encouraged and empowered. Amen. Now again, I'm excited to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. And when we're done, I declare and I decree we are going to be that much more wiser, that much more powerful, that much more empowered, amen, that much more anointed because we will have gotten understanding of the word of God, amen. The Bible tells us in all our getting, get understanding. Uh, so I do want to go ahead and get started again. Thank you so much for being here, share, spending this time with me. Um, so before I get started, let us pray. Father God, I pray that you will open the eyes of your people so they can see what you're saying. Open the ears so they can hear what you're saying. Open our hearts, oh God, so that we can receive what you're saying, Father God. We know this is, has been and is a difficult time. And we're asking, Father God, that you will show yourself strong and mighty during this hour. That we are, again, encouraged, empowered, and enabled to go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as I was preparing for this message, I, of course, was asking the Lord what he would have me to share with you on today. I mean, after all, this is the first Bible study of the year, and we've got to set the tone for the rest of the year. We've got to set the tone for the year 2021. Amen? So as I was preparing for the message, I couldn't help but be reminded of the devastating time that we're in the midst of during this coronavirus pandemic. I couldn't help but be reminded of all that we have come through, all that we have had to endure in 2020. And I thought about how this year, 2021, how it's going to be different. I mean, it's got to be different. There is no way we can live another 2020. And as I was thinking about it, thinking about how dark it's been, how devastating it's been, and just all out distressing, the Lord began to minister to me. And he began to say to me that there are 
are some of you who think God doesn't see you. There are some of you who think God doesn't know what you're going through. And some of you even still who thinks God doesn't know where you are. In fact, you believe God has forgotten about you. And you have been living in a dark place. I have come to tell you today, the Lord wants you to know. He sees you. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you have been through and he knows exactly what you are going through. And it doesn't matter how dark it has been. It doesn't matter how bleak it has been or how hopeless you may have felt or how hopeless you feel. He has not forgotten about you. Amen. He knows exactly where you are. He has his hand upon you. There's no way he can lose sight of you. There's no way he can lose you, period. Amen. So I do want you to be encouraged. Hallelujah. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through, God sees you and he knows exactly where you are. Now, as I, met, as I was um, meditating on the word, sitting in the Lord's presence, the Lord began to minister to me and I found myself in the book of Psalm, the 39th chapter. Now, I know this may be a very familiar passage of scripture to some, but I found myself reading Psalm 39, and it was at verse 4 that grabbed my attention. Now, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and it says, Lord, remind me of how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. How fleeting my life is. Now I must say, and I know almost 100%, I'm 100% certain that you will agree with me. There is nothing like a sobering reminder of how brief our time on earth is. There is nothing like a reminder that will cause you to wake up and reevaluate your life. There is nothing like a reminder that will cause you to have to reevaluate your time on earth or to cause you to have to reevaluate your purpose for living. There is nothing as sobering as being reminded that we may have more days behind us than we do ahead of us. There is nothing more sobering. Amen? I was reminded of when I turned 50, the big 5-0. And I'm telling you that was the most eye-opening jaw-dropping experience I had ever had and I will always remember it. I will never forget it. When I came to the realization that I was closer to Jesus than I had ever been. Now that was a wake-up call. Amen? My God. I know some of you watching me who were in that same boat. That is a wake-up call. You see, somehow, I believe, we as a people have seemed to have forgotten how brief our time on earth is. Somehow, we seem to have forgotten that our days are numbered. We've forgotten how fleeting our life is. You know, here today, 
gone tomorrow in the blink of an eye. And in this fourth verse of Psalm 39, we find David praying, asking God to remind him. In other words, it's true. Sometimes we have to be reminded so that we can accomplish the purpose for which we have been sent to accomplish. Amen? Now, it goes without saying, the Lord has a way of reminding us whether we, like David, ask him to remind us or not. And while it is sad to say, it is safe to say, the coronavirus, this pandemic that we are in the midst of, has come to serve as a reminder. Amen? It's a reminder that our lives are brief. It serves as a reminder that our days are numbered and our life is fleeting. And it's evident in the almost 350,000 lives that have been lost as a result of this virus. Now there are two factors that are to be considered in this verse. And that is, when the Bible talks about our life's end and the number of days. Now, if we cross-reference this verse with Psalm 90, verse 12, now in the New Living Translation, it tells us, or it says, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Now, this verse points out why it's important to realize our lives are short. Why it's important for us to remember that our lives are fragile and that is so that we can learn as we grow so that we may come to understand the word of God, the ways of God, the will of God, that we can learn and come to understand the purpose and the plans of God for our lives. That is wisdom. Amen? So that we may mature in the things of God and accomplish what we've been sent to accomplish. We cannot forget, people of God, we are here on an assignment. Amen? It is a reminder so that we can refocus, if you will, so that we can get back on track and do what God has called us to do. So, I would go as far as to say that this virus, this pandemic, has done everything to us that it could possibly do. I mean, every aspect of our lives have been affected, have been impacted one way or another. There isn't one person on this earth that hasn't been affected or impacted in some way. Oftentimes when there's so much devastation, we lose focus, we lose hope, and we lose faith. We take our eyes off of God and we get caught up in the whirlwind of life and its destructions and the damage that it leaves. So, I want to submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, the first thing that we, as the people of God, the first thing that we need to do in this new year, in this year of 2021, is to refocus. Amen? We need to put our attention back on God so that we may live the life that he has called us to live. Let this 
devastation that we have experienced, whatever situation that we found ourselves in, let it serve as a reminder. Let it teach us to realize that we are here for a reason. We are here for a purpose so that God would get the glory out of our lives. Amen? Now, if 2020 didn't teach you anything else, it should have taught you or it should have reminded you that life is short. The second aspect of this verse in Psalm 39, verse 4, it talks about the number of days. The number of days. Which, after doing cross-reference, after cross-reference, eventually, I found myself in Psalm 139, verse 16. 139, verse 16. Now, in this verse, again, it's a familiar verse. In the New uh, International Version, this verse reads, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now this verse is actually an assurance. It's an insure, assurance that God has not forgotten about you. That if he saw your unformed body, if he saw you before you were born, and all the days ordained for you are written in his book, surely he sees you now. Amen? He knows exactly where you are and exactly what you're going through. He's got his eye on you. Amen? Amen? Now, I, I can't begin to tell you how many times I've read this scripture and for the most part it just reduced it down to we were created by God and all the days of our lives were written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Oftentimes, people wonder that if all the days of our lives are ordained by God, if all the days of our lives are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then do we really have a choice in how we live? Do we really have a choice in how our lives turn out? Now, when David wrote this psalm, it, it, it suggested that he was not saying that the script for our lives has been written in indelible ink, that the plan for our lives have been etched in stone, that the plans are permanent, or that they cannot be changed. He was just simply acknowledging God's plan for our lives, which included the number of days that God had ordained for us. However, it is to acknowledge that our days, our lives are predestined. They are ordained by God. And whatever wills, whatever he allows, whatever he determines, it is so. Now we may have the freedom to choose, but ultimately, if what we chose does not line up with the will of God, he has a way of reminding us to refocus. Amen? Now we know that God is involved in every aspect of our lives. And he is very much concerned about the details of our lives. And that his plan for us is that we will prosper and be in good health. Amen? And I pray that we remember that God is involved 
in every details of our lives. And I can't help but to say to you, I know it's a difficult time, but God has a plan for your life. And everything that concerns you concerns him. Even after saying all of that, as I continue to meditate on the word of God, the Lord began to arrest me in my spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit began to enlighten me. He started to show me something that I had never seen before. Well, I had never paid attention, I should say, amen? So when I went back and I read the verse again, this time it says, your eyes saw my unformed body. And I was stuck right there. I couldn't go any further. His eyes saw my unformed body. Immediately I started to wrestle with the word of God. The fact that God saw my unformed body seemed to cause me to grapple with what did he see if it was unformed? We know unformed means that it's shapeless, it's formless, it's not developed or it's not created. But he saw it. And I imagine that if it was formless, if it was shapeless, if it had not been developed, if it had not been created, then what was it? It was nothing, I reasoned. So it had no shape, had no form, not developed. Then it must be nothing. So I was amazed at the fact that God saw nothing. And I said to myself, I want to be able to see nothing. So I had to ask, how does God see nothing? How does my unformed body become formed into who I am? Or how does it become formed into what God has created it to be? And then I said to myself, as I was trying to figure this all out, he saw something that was not there. It was unformed. It was shapeless, not developed, not created. Now, I don't want you to miss what I'm about to say because it is going to all come together if you just stay with me. Because while I was struggling with trying to figure out how he saw something that was not there, the Lord began to say to me, it doesn't mean that it's not there. It means it's not shaped. It's not formed, it's not developed, but it does not mean that it's not there. Now, I want to say this again because as we continue to struggle to move forward in the midst of this pandemic, as we struggle to put the pieces of our lives back together, I know there are some of you who are looking at your situation who are looking at your circumstance and you're saying, I have nothing. And every time you look at your situation, you continue to be convinced that there is nothing there. But I have come to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that the Lord said, hallelujah, your situation, your circumstance is unformed. Whatever it is that you need, you just need to have it formed. It needs to be shaped. It needs to be developed. It needs to be created. But it does not mean that it is not there. Amen? It does not mean that you don't have whatever it is that you need because it's unformed. It doesn't mean that it's not healed. It doesn't mean that it's not a job. It doesn't mean that it's not a business. It doesn't 
mean that it's not your provision. It doesn't mean that it's not a ministry. It means it has to be formed. It has to be developed. It has to be created. It is there. People of God, everything that we need is there. It just has to be formed. Amen? Everything that you need has already been provided for you. Everything that you need has already been ordained for you. Amen? And for this new year, for 2021, we are going to have to do what we have seen God do. When he created the heavens and the earth in the book of Genesis, in chapter 1, come on somebody, it's a very familiar passage of scripture. It tells us in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. Now that sounds like some place that we're in. It sounds like some of the situations we're in. It sounds like some of the circumstances that we found ourselves in, amen? The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the, the deep waters and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. Amen? He said, let there be and it was. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the deep waters. People of God, the Holy Spirit is hovering over your situation. The Holy Spirit is hovering over your circumstances. God has got you covered. Amen. He sees us. He knows exactly where we are. He knows exactly what we need. He's involved in every detail of our lives. He has ordained it to be so before a single day has come to pass. Amen? So whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you're looking at that appears to be nothing, that appears to be without form, that appears to be void and appears to be empty. My brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you right now to speak to it and command it to be. Command it to take shape. Command it to take form. Command it to develop. Command it to be created. Command it to come into existence. Call those things that be not as though they are. Amen. And here, hallelujah, here is the key. And I'm going to be done. I'm going to get out of your way. People of God, hallelujah. The key, and not only did God speak it into existence, but he did it in the beginning. Hallelujah. People of God, we are in the beginning. We are in the beginning of a new year. Hallelujah. We are in the beginning of 2021. And unless we start calling those things that be not as though they are into existence for 2021, it is going to be just like it was in 2020 unformed. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter where you are right now. What matters right now is that you put your focus on God. Hallelujah. That you begin to declare and to decree those things. Hallelujah. That be not. Hallelujah. That you begin to call them into existence. Hallelujah. You need healing. Call it forth. Hallelujah. You need a job? Call it forth. Hallelujah. You need finances? Call it forth. In the name of Jesus. You want to 
to start that business, call it forth. Hallelujah. You want to start that ministry, call it forth. You want to write that book, call it forth. Begin to speak to those things. Begin to declare and to decree. Hallelujah. That it is so. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no other way that our year of 2021 will turn out other than the way we declare it to turn out. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah, has his eye on you. He is in control. Hallelujah. He sits on the throne with all power and authority in his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to be encouraged for this new year. I cannot thank you enough, hallelujah, for sharing this time with me. Hallelujah. I ask that you continue to join me on Wednesdays, same time, 7.30 Eastern. Hallelujah, that we can continue to be committed and faithful. Hallelujah, as we delve into the Word of God, hallelujah, to get what God has for us so that we are able to move forward in our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for this time. Hallelujah, that you have allowed, allowed me to stand with your people, your sons and your daughters to declare and to decree that this year, this new year, 2021, hallelujah, shall be as we declare it. Hallelujah, for your word said, declare a thing and it shall be established. Hallelujah, God, and I thank you and I praise you. Hallelujah, Father God, I ask that you would give your sons and your daughters the strength, hallelujah, to birth forth that which you have for them in this season. I pray that you would give them the courage, give them the hope and the faith that they need in order to, to birth forth and to do what you have called them to do. Hallelujah, God. I pray that you would get the glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray and I give thanks. I call it forth, my brothers and my sisters. You shall have what you decree in Jesus' name. Be well, be safe, and be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah.